My friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Tech. My name is Alan. In the most recent episode of The Dad Batch, the squad is trying to help Omega learn how to use her newly acquired compound bow. Omega has picked it up from a Zygarian slaver, and I find those degenerate cat aliens repulsive. I mean, any alien that tries to enslave humans should be destroyed immediately. But those cats fight pretty well, and they know their weapons pretty well as well. Remember that one time Anakin, Obi-Wan, and Captain Rex get wrecked by a bunch of Zygerians with their energy whips? Anyway, the Zygerians love energy-based weapons, and their compound bow is no different. Well, actually, Wiki calls it a Zygerian crossbow, but I think they messed it up in translation. A Wookiee bowcaster fits that description better. Anyway, today we'll be taking a look at this very interesting weapon. We'll talk about how it works, and we'll break down some pros as and some cons as well. The Zygerians aren't the only ones in the galaxy who like to use bows. Now, in a galaxy full of lightsabers and blasters, energy bows are kind of rare, but other users can be found, like on Dothomir. The Night Sister hunters from the planets are famous for wielding energy bows that run on a similar principle to the Zygerian compound bow. These bows were powered by a plasma generator, which created a similar pink energy bowstring in all of the plasma arrows. Plasma is an interesting material. It's one of the four natural states of matter. It's neither a gas nor a liquid, but at the same time, when activated by heat, can cut through solid metal. Plasma consists of a gas of ions or atoms who have had their orbital electrons removed. This can be achieved by either superheating gas, like what we see with Hacksmith's new proto lightsaber, or by subjecting gas to a very strong electromagnetic field. I'm gonna guess that these energy bows that we see in Star Wars are gonna be using that second method, which is using an electromagnetic field to contain all of that plasma into one place. Because that would be the only way to contain a plasma arrow when it's being launched out of the bow. Without an electromagnetic containment field, the plasma would just kind of dissipate into the air. It's very clear in the Star Wars universe they have very advanced technology. I mean, they can create EMPs without detonating a nuclear weapon, which is something we can't do here on Earth. And they can also create these containment fields that we just wouldn't know how to do. As of now, we just have plasma cutters that create a hot beam or torch-like effect. But actually containing plasma in a ball or orb and then firing it out of, like, I don't know, a railgun or something is completely beyond our capabilities at this point. We only have lasers. Now, Omega's Zygerian compound bow is pretty cool because it also folds up. The plasma only becomes activated when the drawstring area is pulled all the way back. I'm guessing this pulling back action is what activates the electromagnetic field and also releases the gas that is compressed into the plasma and forms the drawstring and the arrow. Once the drawstring is fully pulled back, an arrow materializes from the plasma, and then when that drawstring is released, the arrow will go flying towards its target. I'm not exactly sure what type of gas is used by these energy bows. It could be Tabana gas, which is what blasters use. Although the purple and pinkest nature of the plasma energy bow could mean it comes from a different source. Most blaster bolts using Tabana gas come out red. So what are the benefits of having an energy bow or an energy compound bow? Well, for one, they were rare weapons, and the sight of them could be potentially very intimidating. The Night Sisters of Dathomir had very little resources and things to trade with the outside world, so most of their income came from sending out sisters to become mercenaries. There were three classes of Night Sister mercenaries. You had warriors who were melee fighters, shadow killers who were stealthy assassins, and the hunters who utilized their energy bows. Night nice Sister hunters were famed for their skill with these weapons, and the sight of them struck fear into the hearts of their enemies. The purple plasma shots and bows appeared otherworldly and terrifying, especially when combined with the mysterious aura of the Night Sisters and their magical ichor. On a more practical level, energy bows were a lot quieter than a blaster or a conventional firearm. Also, from what we can tell, projectiles from the plasma bow are much longer and larger than blaster projectiles and seem to transfer more kinetic and thermal energy towards its target. It's not just a tiny blob of plasma, it's literally a long spear of plasma. It can do a lot of damage. During the Battle of Dothamir, the Night Sisters are able to take down most of these droids easily with only one shot. Because the arrows are created out of the drawstring itself, this means you don't have to knock on any arrows. Therefore, rapid fire is as easy as pulling the plasma string back enough to form the arrow. 
There's no need to hold multiple arrows in between your fingers to loose multiple shots in a short period of time. And because these compound bows had very little recoil when compared to blasters and traditional firearms, it became very easy to hit the same target over and over again. And because the plasma bow is relatively simple and most of the weapon is exposed to the air, there's little chance of the weapon overheating. This is a big problem with blasters and conventional firearms. When they overheat, not only do they stop working, they could potentially damage the internal components and barrel of that weapon. The simplicity of the energy bow also means less cleaning, less maintenance, and less of a chance that it could misfire and malfunction. As awesome as blasters were, they were still pretty fragile technology and very advanced technology. They had all sorts of components like uh, focusing lenses and computers inside of them. Also, when an energy bow runs out of plasma arrows, the drawstring still has a decent cutting edge and can be used for close range attacks. Energy bows can also be very dangerous for the user. That same drawstring, which has terribly hot plasma in it, can also harm the user if they're not careful. And like a lightsaber, these strings are weightless, so sometimes it's quite easy to forget that they're there. Luckily, the drawstrings are usually deactivated when not in use. But I'm pretty sure plenty of foolish people have lost fingers or even entire arms when they weren't paying attention. Energy bows are also pretty hard to use compared to regular weapons. First, you need the strength and endurance to actually hold the drawstring back. Omega, who's a young child, still has problems holding the drawstring in firing position for long periods of time. But even the strongest individual will get tired after repeating this motion time and time again. It's a lot more tiring than just doing this. And so the longer you fight with one of these energy bows, the less accurate you'll probably become. Aiming is also much harder. While traditional rifles have stocks, chin rests, and even bipods for multiple points of contact, the energy bow must be suspended in the air. The longer you hold the bow in the aiming position, the more strength it takes from your arms as well. The sights on a bow can also be pretty difficult to use. They're basically like iron sights. There's no scopes or any kind of magnification possibilities here. And as fast as some individuals might be with a plasma bow, there's still no match for a heavy repeating blaster rifle when it comes to rapid firing. Bows also have to be fired mainly from a standing position or a modified crouch. They can't be fired from the prone position and usually the individuals firing a bow have to uh, expose their entire upper body in order to get a shot comfortably. On top of that, these bows aren't completely silent so they will attract the attention of enemies once you fire. The energy bow also needs a little bit more room than a rifle to fire. I mean, it's probably very unwieldy if you're using it inside in packed areas or if you're trying to fire from within a vehicle, let's say. And when a plasma bow runs out of ammunition, the process of reloading it can be complicated. You can't just quick swap in another magazine. So that's all the information we have right now of the energy bow. Hopefully Omega will get really good at firing that thing. So we'll have a little more information about some of the more unique traits of this weapon and why people would use this over, let's say, a blaster rifle. Also, let me know in the comment section below if you have any insight on the energy bow that I've missed. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button down below as well so you don't miss out on the rest of our Bad Batch coverage. As usual, thanks for joining us today. If you're watching this, you are Generation Tech.